Learning objectives include serological methods for bacterial or microbial identification. Um, as in the previous lecture, we saw that um, serum or antibodies could be used for agglutination, which is a serological method or serological interaction. Similarly, there is another serological interaction, what we call precipitation uh, test. In a precipitation test, the antigen is also soluble. As I mentioned earlier, that the antibodies are always soluble, but if the antigen is also soluble, the test is called precipitation. Versus when the antigen is not soluble, is a particulate, big particle, we call it agglutination. Let's explore a little bit on this precipitation uh, testing. There's a very commonly used precipitation test, what we call agar gel precipitation test. It has various forms. Uh, as I already mentioned, that soluble antigen binds with the antibodies. This agar gel precipitation test is done basically in a plate where the either the antigen or the antibody is fixed in the medium. Uh, like in this uh, example, as you can see, there is a central well which contains our antigen. And antigen, remember, antigen in this case is soluble. Soluble antigens are like toxins released by microorganisms. The very typical example of soluble antigen is toxins. And against that toxin, if we had produced antibodies, we can put that antibody in the medium, in the agar. So antibodies are basically embedded in this agar here, agar plate. And antigen is placed in a well, which is basically in the center of the agar gel plate. And what happens is that the antigen would diffuse out from this well. It would diffuse in all directions radially. And that is the reason it is called radial immunodiffusion test. When antigen-antibody in interaction happens where a specific concentration of both the reactant reaches, like as you can see that here in this zone, antigen is more than the antibodies. But as the antigen diffuses out, uh, antigen gets diluted. So a specific concentration automatically is reached where you could see a precipitation interaction happening in, in a visible form. So this is a zone where the precipitation is, uh, could be seen or is happening. This is called radio immunodiffusion. It's a single radio immunodiffusion test. We can devise this test into double immunodiffusion, where we place antigen and antibodies separately in different parts of the plate, and then antigen diffuses towards the antibodies, and antibodies diffuses towards the antigen. And where they meet in specific ratio, specific concentration, there you would see a precipitation line. As you can see here, the ant antigen diffuses towards this side, antibodies diffuses to this side, and they combine in this area and form a visible line, a precipitation line. Now, this is the actual plate showing those precipitation lines. You see that the, either the antigen or the antibodies was placed uh, in one of these wells. Let's say here is the antibody placed and here are different antigens in the samples. As you can see, this sample and this sample has is positive. So they, uh, we can recognize that, let's say this antibody was against E. coli and this sample, we don't know whether this was E. coli or some, some other bacterium, but because this visible line showing that there is a specific interaction going on and that is why we can tell that this antigen or this sample contained E. coli. So as you can see that the visible line here and the visible line there, that is a positive uh, interaction or positive precipitation line. In summary, as you saw that the precipitation could also be used for microbial identification.